There once was an analog signal that wanted to make itself digital. From cable to box, as quick as a fox, the process was swift and invisible. The average of yes and no values, and other math stuff we won't tell you, the binary code meant a one or an O, very rapid and digital deluge. We call this a discrete time process. It's more blocky and not quite as flawless as continuous systems all smoothed to condition, yet data-wise quite the colossus. Now compiling a complex illusion, the samples they seem to make fusion. Amplitude and time, a trick of the mind, like frames in a movie, we use them. But do not forget of the dangers, not of violence or muggings from strangers, but of sampling rates that do not gel great with frequencies have that frame rate or greater. Think of a wheel, if you will, that is captured and shown in a film. The wheel may turn backward, it's turning far faster than the frame rate we use can fulfill. In the realm of our digital signal are some frequencies high, fast, and brittle. Most of them we can hear, but their cycles appear to turn back like our film and wheel riddle. So what now, you all say with a groan? How will we deal with these new overtones? Well, these wounds you can mend, yes, the filter's your friend, we can cut off the super high zones. That whole long predicament's named is called aliasing, and it's a shame. But as long as you cut at Nyquist and above, you'll probably come out unscathed. If you're not yet sick of these limericks, I'm quite sure that you will be soon. We're only half done, and it's no longer fun, but there's certainly more things to do. Filters have many a use, be it reverb, delay, or EQ. You can put on some flange and then go to the band. band. There's so many things you can do. Convolution's a math operation, like summing or multiplication. Takes two things and makes third. Here is a signal preferred. It's a part of our digital filtration. We'll spare you the math for a time. It's boring to make numbers rhyme. But we have here two types, endless and finite. They're filters you must recognize. The first filter works from a bang that repeats, feeding back, and delaying. They're oft electronic for digital sonics. Infinite impulse response is its name. The former's a little more recent. Its sibling is nonetheless decent. Finite impulse response. Don't forget it, you pawns. It doesn't feed back for some reason. Now this here is my favorite part, where the 21st century starts. Allows for CDs and the old MP3s. Its methods are really quite smart. It's codecs, computers, and compression. Analog was a size-based depression. Had to deal with these discs, bricks, and scratches were risks. It was nearly a moral transgression. But we've since found a cool way around the old needle and groove for your sound. It's based on your mind, which is off, deaf, and blind, and can't tell what's what when things get loud. Equal loudness curves aren't so bad. There are brain failings shown on a graph. They tell when and where we'll be unaware of the data computers cut back. The codec is used all the time. An industry has been redefined. But it's not always best, audiophiles attest. It's a shame, it's a vice, it's a crime. And yes, those with good ears will know that the companies pander to those who are too naive to hear that the sound in their ear has been given a cheap shave too close. I think that that's all for today. There's only so much we can take. We've tried to do well and not bore you to hell. So Langdon, please give us an A.